The Time Trick 3, Part 2. The door of the interrogation room opened. Inspector Chimp walked in. What? What are you up to? I'm going to file a complaint. Only if you can get out. Inspector Chimp pointed at his badge, then pointed at Cyril. I say in the name of justice that you, Cyril, kidnapped Ringo. Cyril trembled when he heard that, but he managed to force himself to keep calm. What? What, what are you rambling about, Inspector Chimp? Oh, you're very cunning. You almost tricked us. Inspector Chimp pulled out a pocket watch. Its hands ticked rhythmically. On the day of Ringo's kidnapping, you intentionally went to the convenience store and kept repeating that it was three o'clock while you shopped. You did that to confuse the clerk about the time, knowing she would then provide you with an alibi. Beads of sweat formed on Cyril's brow. Uh, you, you're just talking nonsense. Oh, is that so? I can assure you, it's not. Inspector Chimp pulled out a pot of lemon verbena from behind his back. You made a lot of plans, but you overlooked one thing. See this pot of lemon verbena? The store clerk planted it. Every afternoon at 3 o'clock, she waters the flowers and moves the awning. But guess what? The clerk told me that you came into the store before she watered the flowers. That means it wasn't 3 o'clock when you got there. You were there earlier, which gave you plenty of time to commit the crime. I, uh, uh... Inspector Chimp had uncovered Cyril's brilliant scheme. Cyril lowered his head and was about to confess when he remembered something. He thought of the crime guy that had appeared on his doorstep. It had a plan for how to deal with a situation like this. Huh. All this evidence is what you call circumstantial. You must have definitive proof before you can accuse me. Oh yeah, that's right, Inspector Chip. Do you have definitive proof that I kidnapped Ringo? You are just guessing. To Cyril's surprise, no matter how much he shouted, Inspector Chimp did not show the least bit of fear. Hmph. <laughs> you want proof? Of course I have it. Do you remember how the power went out in the interrogation room? We cut it on purpose. We've been holding you for two days and two nights. What? to file a complaint! You can't do that! It's illegal! Fine. But first, you'll have to explain why the deadline set by the kidnapper passed while you were here. But the kidnapper never so much as made a phone call to Mr. Rhino. Uh, uh, I... This tells me one thing. You were the one who kidnapped Ringo! Inspector Chimp's words broke Cyril's resolve. He collapsed in his chair. I... I admit it. I did it. Once Cyril admitted his guilt, he poured out the whole story, and the police officers were able to rescue Ringo. Mr. Rhino and Ringo rushed into one another's arms the moment they saw each other. Inspector Chimp, there's one thing I don't understand. We've only been holding Cyril for a short while. Why did he believe you when you said it had been two days? I used the same trick on Cyril that he used on the store clerk. Inspector Chimp turned and headed toward his office. The officer followed close behind. Darkness disrupts our perception of time. When we put Cyril into a dark room with no windows, he started to think that a long time had passed, even though it hadn't been long at all. When I figured out his trick, I did the same thing, making suggestions to convince him of what I wanted him to think. He broke down and confessed then. Ah, so that's how you did it. You're truly amazing, Inspector Chimp. <laughs>